Hey everyone, welcome to another $1,000 strap. Oh, wait a second. We'll make that a $1,000 coin roll search. Yes, I showed all those boxes of coins I had and I decided, well, let's crack them open. I've been watching enough videos. Let's see what I can find and what I can figure out for myself. Now, rather than sit here and have you guys watch me open the rolls, what I want to do is I want to take you through the process of being a coin roll hunter. Um, the first thing you're going to need when you're coin roll hunting is a place to put your coins. And I'm sure all of you are familiar with um, these books here. This is a dance go book for Jefferson Nichols. Inside it's got spots for the nickels where you can see front and back. Um, Whitman also makes books like that. They're blue books. So that's, that's where you start with. You start with a place to put them. Step two, you need the coins. You're going to have to get yourself a box of coins from a bank. Uh, you can get any kind of coins you like to collect, whether it be pennies, whether it be boxes of dimes, boxes of quarters, any any denomination you prefer to collect. Like me, I got one of everything, basically. So then what do you do? Well, when you watch a lot of coin roll hunters on YouTube, you see people grabbing them, going through, picking out the silver, and they just wash away everything else. And they don't ever show you what to do with the coins that you don't keep. And they don't exactly show you how to how to get started. So that's what this is. This is kind of a how do I get started. Um, I was in the process of doing my nickels. So I decided I'm going to leave my nickels right where I left them. And I'm going to tell you how I got there. And then I'm going to show you the finds that I found and everything else. So the first thing I did when I got my box of nickels is I grabbed my red book. And I flipped to the section in there about nickels. And I looked to see what there was about as far as um, rarer coins, oddities that I should be looking for. And inside the Red Book, basically the one that they pointed out were 82s. Uh, 1982s have a double die on the Monte Monticello on the back. I don't have my magnifier set up yet, so I can't check those. So I did pull those. My Jefferson Nickel book starts with 1970 and goes older and from everything that that I've watched on YouTube it seems that most of you seem to collect from 1960 and back so what I did is as I was going through the nickels I would stack 1970s 69 68 67 66 65 those of you who collect nickels know this gigantic pile here is all 64s 63 62 61 60 and so on down the line uh, so I've got, I know that 70, 60, I didn't find any 50s. These are all 1940s. You know, these are my 61s. These are my 41s. Um, over on this side, I know that this is my uh, 69s, my 59s. I didn't find any 49s. I did find a 39 or two. And I just want to show this 39 real quick because this 39 is just spectacular. Uh you can see 1939 on that one. If I flip it over, normally the backs are just completely worn smooth on all these. I can hold this back pretty far, and you can see a lot of detail on there. I only wish the zoom would work really well on this so that you can see how much detail is left in this 39. But anyway, by doing this, I now have an assortment of coins from each year. My next step is with my nickels will be taking a particular year starting with let's say 1970s i'll separate them out between the d's the p's and the s's and find the best one of each one then i can put those in my book and the rest of the 70s i'll put back into circulation uh, but like i said you never see any coin roll hunters actually doing that and i'm sure they did that with their first box but you never get to see that. So this is this is how it ends up looking for me with, like I said, with nickels. With dimes, I literally went from 2019 to the furthest dime that I found, which I believe was 1954 in the box that I hunted. Um, did the same thing with uh, quarters. Did the same thing with the halves. That way I've got uh, one of everything in my binder and then from that point on as I'm going through boxes I can only keep the you know I only have to keep the good ones uh, some of the other things as far as nickels uh, you want to keep you want to keep a lookout for the 2004s and the 2005s those are the ones that have the special backs on them uh, it was the first I know this isn't coming through on here too well because it won't focus right 
But yeah, if you check your red book, it shows the pictures of the 2004s, 2005s. So I have those separated so I can at least find one good one of each of those to put in my book as well. Once I've got a good one, I'm not going to bother saving any of the rest. did find a couple Canadians. I found a Canadian nickel. This one is 1989. I know a lot of you guys like pointing out all the foreigns. Um, I, I kind of think of it as lost money because I can't return this. Uh, I can't spend it. Well, I can sneak it in if I want to spend it. I'm just not big into the foreign coins, that's all. This one, though, is a little cooler. This is a much older Canadian. This one is from 1961. Uh, it's got the beaver on it. I, I guess that would be the young head on there. I think that's what you guys call. Compare it side by side with the other one, see what we've got here. Yes. Certainly a younger head versus the more current one. Uh, the older nickels are actually, I don't know if you can see that, they've got, they're, uh, they're flattened. They've got flat spots on them, on the older Canadian nickels. That's why I think that's kind of neat where this one here is still smooth. Uh, the only other thing that I pulled out, uh, out of that entire box, I only found one 2009. 2009, they just did a low mintage on every type of coin, whether it be nickels, dimes, quarters, pennies, whatever the case is. So, in that whole box, I found one 2009. I did not find any war nickels. That's this big blank spot here. 1940, 1941. No 42, 43, 44s, or 45s. So this starts the 46s. Uh, but I've got enough to get started and enough to start putting stuff in my book, knowing that I'm not just putting junk in my book. I'm putting the best of what I found. And now as I go through other boxes, I'll be able to take just the nice coins and put them in there. So that was my nickels. Uh, for dimes, I've got those up here. I did find two. Uh, these are both 2009s. So in one dime box, I only found two 2009 coins. Uh, this was uh, the uh, only silver I found. It, this was a 1954. That was the oldest one that I found. In dimes, you have to remember, well, in dimes, quarters, and uh, halves, you're looking for 64 and older for silver coins. So that was the 54. Uh, what was the next one? This, I hope this shows up on there. This one I found in there, and this is a grease smear or a grease error. Uh, it, it happens when there's an overabundance of grease on the die when they're making the coins. And when I put that through the light, you can see how the whole thing looks pockmarked like that. Uh, that's, like I said, that's an error from an abundance of grease between the planchette and the die itself. And I, finding one of these in the first box I, I searched, I, I think that's kind of neat. That's a, that's a pretty cool discovery for me. And the other dime that I found that was kind of weird, uh, it's the wrong color. I don't know if it was just too thin of a coating of nickel on there and this is just all copper, or if this was a copper planchette, or if it's just something spilt on the coin. Um, on the back side, this is, it has a more goldish hue compared to, you know, like I said, the 2009 side by side. You can see there's a difference there, and of course, when I flip the fronts over, it looks like copper. Anyway, I don't know enough about coins to know if that is a true error or if that is just something spilt on the coin. Still a neat thing that I found. Figured I'd show it in the quarters. Um, these were all state quarters that I wanted to double check against my book to see if they're nicer than the ones that I currently have in there. Uh, I did find one silver. Silver quarter right here. This one is 1963. So that is a full-blown silver quarter. About two or three bucks worth of silver. Paid a quarter for it. Not bad. This one here, probably just a damaged coin, but I want someone with better knowledge than me to take a look at it. It's got a flat spot here. Probably damage, but it could be uh, a clipped planchet. When you look at the coin, it's not as if somebody pounded it because when you look at the date right there, that stuff is not squished. It just looks like it's missing. Same on this side. It's not squished as if somebody pounded on it. It's just missing. So I may have gotten lucky and found a clipped planchet in this one. The other one I found and it was the Colorado Error. This is the regular Colorado State Quarter right here. Uh, the back of the regular Colorado State Quarter, just to give you a ref reference point. 
but I found the what they call a cud error. The cud error, line that up, look right here. See how there's a giant chunk of metal right there? I believe that's caused from a broken die. And if I hold up the other one side by side, then you can see it much better as it sort of stays in focus there. That is a cud error on the Colorado. I checked on eBay. These are selling anywhere from $8 to $35. So once again, another cool find. I am happy about that. Um, when I did my box of halves, these are all 1974s. I know that there is a 1974 double die uh, variation out there that can be worth a little bit of money. So rather than checking every single one as I found them, I simply put them all in a stack so I can go through them one at a time under my loop and see if I've got any of those. If I don't, then out they go. This stack right here, these are all my NIFCs, not intended for circulations. Um, this particular roll I didn't open because on the end is an NIFC. That's from 2004. NIFC is not intended for circulation. They actually stopped minting half dollars for regular circulation uh, in 2002, I believe. Everything that is dated 2002 to current was minted simply for collectors. You were supposed to go and buy them in bags from the mint. Uh, they'd charge anywhere from a buck to a buck fifty per. So when you find these, they're fifty cent coins that you paid fifty cents for that the U.S. Mint usually sells for a buck, buck fifty. Uh, and the last find that I had, uh, this is a oh, what are they? Uh, I'm not even sure what they call it. A a post punch, uh, I, or something to that effect. This is a coin that somebody else. Once the coin was minted, they put their own punch on it. Now, this looks like it's got a German cross on there like that. Um, so that, that was all the things that I found searching my $500 box of halves, my $500 box of quarters, my $250 box of dimes, and my $100 box of nickels. I hope that gives you a little bit of insight on how to get started on collecting coins. I'm going to be filming my usual $1,000 strap search uh, either later today or tomorrow, so you can look forward to that. But thanks for watching this one. I hope I helped you out. If you learned anything new, hit that like button. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.